Hello friends. So recently I bought this Yamaha brand AV receiver and CD player. And I paid about 20 euros for these broken devices, which is still a pretty good deal considering how expensive these things must have been about 20 years ago when they were manufactured. And also considering the valuable parts that I can salvage from these devices. Now what I'm going to do in this video is to take a look at the AV receiver only and put the CD player aside. We will take a look inside, make a teardown, also assess the damage and salvage a lot of components, which I then in another later video want to use to build a new device using the old enclosure and a large percentage of the electronics that I'm going to salvage today. Now this is a Yamaha RXV595 RDS AV receiver. And when we're talking about a receiver, we typically mean a power amplifier combined with an integrated radio tuner. And if it's an AV receiver, then you also had the possibility to connect video input to this device. And in this case, because this is from the late 90s, that would be component and S video input which by now is an outdated technology and people who are in this whole high fidelity home theater thing will not be using component video anymore. So I've dealt with a lot of classic stereo amplifiers and receivers in the past, but never really with AV receivers because it is a technology that I'm personally not all that interested in, to be honest. But let's get an overview of the device and you will see that there are a lot of similarities to classic stereo amplifiers. Here in the front we have the power supply unit with a large mains transformer in the middle. And here we have 10 power transistors which make up 5 pairs of complementary bipolar transistors which are basically at the output stage of the power amplifier circuits. And these white components here are pairs of power resistors and the contacts on top of these resistors can be used to measure and adjust the idling currents of the power amplifiers. And then we have a large heatsink of a construction style that is typical for Japanese audio equipment. You never really see that in German equipment at least. And we can also see like video input selectors the tuner and the DSP module, but we'll take a closer look at these things later. But before I go on, let's see what happens if we try to turn on this device. So as you can see, it shuts itself down immediately. And normally you can enter a self-diagnostics menu, but we don't even get to that. So when I bought this receiver and even when I was still filming this material, I was still thinking about maybe repairing it. And that is why I now tried to find the faulty components inside the device. And that turned out to be not too hard. If you take a look at the PCB of the power amplifier here, you can see that a little electrolytic capacitor has burst. And you can also see the traces of some corroded copper on the surface of the PCB. So the next thing would be to take out the entire power amplifier and take a closer look at the damage. But removing the power amplifier board turned out to be harder than I initially thought because a lot of components from all over the device were connected to the board. Some of them with connectors, but some of them also hardwired, which made the thing kind of hard. So I first removed the main loudspeaker jacks from the back side of the device. And then I unscrewed the entire aluminium front panel in order to reach these loudspeaker switches and the headphone jack here that I then also removed. Next I cut the three power wires that were also hardwired to the power supply unit to then remove all the other wires that were connected via these white connectors to other parts of the device. I then also removed the secondary loudspeaker jacks for the rear speakers and unscrewed the heatsink itself from the device's enclosure. More wires had to be removed and also this little board here which holds a bunch of linear regulators on the heatsink had to be unscrewed. So let's take a closer look at the damage shall we. Now obviously this little electrolytic capacitor at some point in time overheated. The vent had broken spilling the electrolyte on the PCB which caused apparently corrosion on a lot of the parts. 
but there are also at least two or three resistors here that have burned through. And on the bottom side of the PCB, we can also see traces that have completely burned away. And the electrolyte also drained over this riser board here, which carries some kind of pre-amplifier stage, I guess. And you can see that there are damages to some components here as well. And here you can also see that some solder on one of the connections of the power transistors has melted at some point. So there must have been some kind of excessive overcurrent situation here at some point. So next I wanted to test the power transistors of the broken amplifier and also of the other stages because I didn't know if they were still working or not. So what I did is to unscrew all the power transistors from the heatsink and then also remove these plastic rivets from the heatsink and the PCB to get the entire thing loose. And here you can see that these little sheets here from rubber or latex, I guess, were used to insulate the power transistors from the heatsink without using thermal compound. And that's actually quite nice if I want to reuse this heatsink because it'll be less of a mess. In the next step, I then desoldered the power transistors First the ones that I thought to be defective and then I first used the component tester to see if they were still in working order. And as you can see the tester goes into calibration mode and that indicates that there is a total short between all three leads because that's what the component tester is doing if you short the leads. So in order to verify that I also used the digital multimeter and measure the resistance between base, emitter and collector respectively. And as you can see there is a complete short for the NPN and for the PNP transistor. So these are completely broken and yes there would have been excessively high current at some point. So here's what I think happened. It is possible that the electrolytic capacitor would maybe be the reason for the defect. But I think that's unrealistic. I think what happened is that someone used low impedance loudspeakers and then switched the impedance selector to very high impedance, like for example 16 ohm speakers. And here you can see in the schematic that if you do that, the outer tabs of the main secondary of the mains transformer are connected to the power amplifier, increasing the supply voltage of the amplifier circuits. And I guess that maybe low impedance or maybe the output was shorted so that the transistors were destroyed before the overcurrent protection of the amplifier could prohibit a catastrophic damage. And I guess that that current then led to the uh, excessive overheating of uh, the electrolytic capacitor and other parts, the burn through the resistors and so on. But that is just what I think happened. And in the next step, I desoldered all the other power transistors and tested them with a component tester as well and they turned out to be working just fine. So it seems that four out of the five power amplifiers are probably still in working order. So could this be repaired by reasonable means? Well, I would have to order replacement transistors and other replacement parts, had to clean off the PCB and use wires to fix the burnt through traces on the PCBs and then hope for the best. But I'm honestly just not interested in repairing this receiver because I got it for very little money and wanted to use the components inside for a device that I want to build for my workbench here in Cologne. And maybe if I had all five original loudspeakers, I would try to repair this but I don't have them. And on top of that, I'm actually only interested in stereo systems, not in surround systems. And so is basically anybody else that I'm friends with here. So I really don't have any use for this particular device. And that's why I went on to desolder all the parts from the power amps PCB that I deemed useful or at least valuable. And what I salvaged here are of course, the white power resistors these solenoids, some electrolytic capacitors, a bunch of relays, the rear and center loudspeaker jacks, and the primary loudspeaker jacks from the other small PCB, also these switches and the headphone jack. As far as the other components go, I will leave them on the PCB and store the PCB in some cardboard box somewhere. So if I need some small transistors, capacitors or resistors that happen to be on this PCB, 
I can desolder them then when I need them. And here you have an overview over the components that I have salvaged so far. And a lot of this can actually be reused in a lot of power electronics projects. And if you were to buy these components here as new parts, they would be quite expensive. And after having taken care of the power amplifier, I basically went on the same way I started this video. I tore down the rest of the device, took out the tuner, the DSP module, another board that has all the switches on it and also the boards with all the RCA connectors and so on and so on. It's really not all that thrilling. And I went on to desolder some more interesting parts like a bunch of potentiometers and a whole range of op amps that I can also use for future projects. And interestingly, a lot of these Japanese devices have operational amplifiers in single inline packages. That is something that you also do basically never see in German audio equipment as far as I can remember. And here you have an overview over the parts that I deem important for the project that I have in mind. And here you can also see some remaining stuff. I will also use the old enclosure in the future. And then we have basically some boards that are still somewhat populated, but mostly with just capacitors, resistors and some small transistors. So as I said, maybe I will desolder some parts when I need them. But I have to end it right now here because it's already a Friday afternoon and I've been working on a lot of stuff this entire week and have to finish this video now. But even if you're kind of disappointed that I didn't repair this device, believe me, the build that I have in mind will be really quite interesting, at least if it works out. And of course, I hope that you like this video and see you soon.